leaders are very important to us. Please hold on and our program will begin shortly. Check podcast is coming up. Please continue to hold. Keep up with the Soundcheck podcast and everything that's happening in the New Sounds Empire. Just go to newsounds.org and follow us on social media. All of the icons are in the top right corner of the page. All of our other musicians are currently playing for other customers. Please stay with us and someone will play for you in just a moment. From NewSounds.org and our studios at WNYC, this is our live performance series we call the Soundcheck Podcast, streaming live on Facebook and YouTube. I'm John Schaefer. Quantic is the work of the British producer, musician, and DJ Will Holland. Now, Holland makes dance music and he uses electronics. But that doesn't mean he makes, you know, EDM, electronic dance music. For the past 18 years or so, He's been creating a kind of global futurist dance music with elements of Latin, funk, minimalism, soul, jazz, and house music. The latest Quantic record is called Atlantic Oscillations. It's out now, and it takes a fair number of people to play this music live, as you'll now see. Here they are with the title track from Atlantic Oscillations. This is Quantic. Thank you. 
That is Quantic with the uh, title track from the latest Quantic record called Atlantic Oscillations, a live performance here in our studio, led by uh, Will Holland on guitar and a rat's nest of cables there that does something <laughs> electronic. Uh, Will, it's good to have you here. Thanks. Thanks. Uh, Quantic over the years has been uh, a kind of a movable feast in terms of personnel. You got So it's a septet today, right? Yeah. Seven yeah, musicians. Yeah. Uh, let me introduce them. Dominic Misana on bass. Uh, behind the drum kit, Caito Sanchez. Paul Wilson uh, is at our piano, and if our piano goes missing tonight, he is suspect <laughs> number one. He's really been enjoying himself at the instrument. Uh, the, <laughs> the strings played by Adriana Malello and Juliet Jones and Sly Fifth Ave on saxophone. Uh, we'll hear him in a featured role in a couple of minutes. Yes, indeed. Um, let, me, let me ask you about the, uh, the title, Atlantic Oscillations. I mean, you're born in Britain, you live here in New York, you spent seven years in between living in Colombia. Were you yeah. on the, uh, the Atlantic slash Caribbean side of Colombia or the I Pacific was, side? I was on the. I started out on the p kind of Pacific side, Cali. Um, okay. Um, in uh, Valle, kind of yeah, a little bit in from the Pacific, but bo basically very Pacific. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And then I ended up in Bogota. Okay, so, uh, but the, the idea of, I mean, this is your first record made here in New York, right? Yes, it is, yeah. So, you know, is this somehow uh, a synthesis of time spent in South America and time spent here in New York? Yeah, I think so. I think in some ways, being from um, the British Isles, in New York is quite, um, you know, there's a lot of people who come from the British Isles, to, and it's quite an easy kind of slide into New York if you're from Britain. Um, and having come from South America and spent some time in Colombia and a lot of time all over South America, it's really nice to come up to New York and know it in a different way, I mm. think, than if I was just coming from the British Isles. Well, there are moments on Atlantic Oscillations on the record that remind me of the sounds of the great danson orchestras, you know, of the mid-20th century. Yep. Did you move to Colombia to be closer to that sound, or is that something that sort of came into your music during the years you were living there? I think one thing that Columbia granted me at the time was um, it I had a lot of space, access to space to make music. And coming from, I was living in Brighton before that, where rent was very expensive and it was hard to find, you know, a lot of space. In the same way, you know, like playing music in Cuba or any other kind of city in kind of that has a lot of Spanish heritage and has these big buildings. You know, it was this, I immediately had this access to like a more, this kind of salon concept, mm. right, of music. Um, and that was really fun. And I started working with a lot of musicians from the, um, Philharmonic and in Cali, as particularly so. So that kind of orchestral sound um, is, but but you know you've you've had that in your musical DNA almost from the beginning. I mean the Quantic Soul Orchestra. Yeah. Uh, that's going back now to like the early aughts, right? Yeah. Yeah. And how big would that orchestra get at its biggest? Well, I th actually, it was me. It was mostly me <laughs> and my sister <laughs> in my bedroom and. Uh, <laughs> And uh, my mum got me a rice tin, uh, sorry, a Turkish delight tin and told, showed me how to put rice in it to make a shaker. So uh, it was basically that. And then it's just, you know, translated. So it, it was an orchestra of the mind is yeah, what exactly. you're saying. It's, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Fortunately, there was no webcam broadcast right, right. in those recordings. So no one actually knew. So w when you got started as a musician, was it as kind of a live performer in the setting like we're seeing now, or was it more from the DJ slash production end of things? So um, I originally got into music through my father, who was a banjo player, and he was obsessed with um, American music, particularly music from the Appalachians and, mm. and you know Tennessee and things like that. So um, that was kind of the backdrop to my musical understanding was through... Um, yeah, through banjo and, and folk and a lot of Peggy Seeger and that kind of stuff in the house. And then um, wow. he was also a computer. Uh, well, my mother also sang a lot. and He was a computer engineer, so we had a lot of like computer stuff around the house as well in the 80s. So kind of like BBC micro five and a half inch discs and things like that. So it was cool growing up there because there was a lot of technology, but there was also a lot of folk yeah. kind of stuff. Like when my father passed away, we had like to rehome like 20 banjos across Great Britain. <laughs> 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 All right. Um, so then this this kind of 
mix of of the old and the new, mm -hmm. the contemporary dance grooves, and then the echoes of these maybe mid-century orchestras. That that comes kind of organically, it seems. I to think you. so. I think so. Growing up, you know, like getting into music production in the nineties, it's like suddenly the the landscape was open right we had all this like you could do anything with sampling and the abilities that we have now it's like you can dip into ever you can do any kind of music you want to i mean people don't but you, it really is more open than when it was a lot more difficult to access technology and, and studios and things like that you know well and, and people could can sample anything and very often if you are a dj slash producer we expect lots of samples of other people's music but even when you do dj sets are you doing that or are you mostly I, doing your own? I do do that. I've also actually become the sampled. I end up, you know, I do get quite a lot of sample sampling of my own songs and uh, mm -hmm. uh, uh, various DJs had sampled my stuff. So it's sort of be careful who you sample because you'll get sampled <laughs> yourself. That's the <laughs> lesson. And what's that? What, what does that feel like when you hear little bits and pieces of yourself coming back? I don't know. At one point it was weird. It was like the, I got a call from the publisher and they were like, oh, David Guetta's in, interested in sam like sampling this one song. And then we'd already done a deal to somebody else who wanted to sample it. And it was all like it's a kind of a bidding war and a past sample. It's, it's a strange concept, but it's, oh, man, it's, yeah, I don't know. It's, it's cool. Yeah. <laughs> well, now, uh, you know, so one day we'll get a water fountain on stage. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Quantic is the is the ensemble, which uh, can be a solo project. Um, and in fact, the next time you perform here in New York, it'll be a DJ set, right? Uh, that is going to be like a solo live. So it's part of the Outlier series, which is a festival uh, run by Bonobo. And he's doing it across the country. And this is a um, large venue in Brooklyn um, called Brooklyn Mirage, I believe, or right. Avant Gardner. And uh, yeah, that'll be kind of a solo modular setup with uh, yeah the rat's nest. I'll clear up all the rodents uh, from the. <laughs> from so the this nest, this is an an, um, an actual modular, so therefore an analog synthesizer yeah, that you've got here. But it's all getting mishmashed these days. There's a lot of digital meets analog, and it's all, you know, okay. there's, there's a lot of experimentation. So, so even a, <clears throat> even a solo quantic performance is a live thing. I mean, you're actually making music live in front of the audience yeah i mean it is possible to just turn up with a usb stick these days yes um but and I then feel... just dance wildly in front of the crowd exactly yeah. exactly yeah. so um yeah i do feel it's like a little bit of a crime still to do that so yeah okay good for you uh so that'll be on august 17th yes. this uh solo performance from quantic but right now we've got the whole band here yeah. in our studio uh, this next piece features the aforementioned Sly on saxophone, Ye both on the record and presumably here in the studio yes, today. Yes, we have him here in the flesh. <laughs> <laughs> Look at him. Uh, yes, uh, Sly Fifth Ave, uh, the Don, and uh, yeah, he's on the, featured on the record. Okay, well. now Orchidia is the name of it. What does that title mean? Orchidia, it's, it's named after, um, or, uh, well, Orchid in English. Okay. And um, I, I just kind of like got I got to know orchids in, in Colombia because I had a little adobe cottage up in the rainforest and we had to trek in there like 45 minutes to get up to it. And we'd always come across orchids in the in the jungle. And I, I kind of got there was such a like exotic, well, not exotic, but it was just such a w amazing little thing when you came across them. And yeah. then thinking about them now when you can just like pick them up at the Whole Foods <laughs> and uh, <laughs> but I just I really love them and I, I just think they're a real treasure and, and they're all different and right yeah so many different like hundreds of varieties and yeah yeah all right well let's hear the piece Orchidia is the name of it you'll find it on the latest Quantic record which is called Atlantic Oscillations but here is a live performance
That's called Orchidia. It's a song from the new Quantic record called Atlantic Oscillations. Once again, Quantic, the work of Will Holland. And Will, you, you could make these records pretty much by yourself, uh, but this record is full of other people, you know, coming and going, many of them from the, the New York independent music scene. What do you get out of that? Uh, here's a softball question that I'm going to lob your way. What do you get out of, out of you know, <laughs> bringing other musicians into something when you, you know you, you could and have in the past done it all yourself? I mean, I think that's maybe, you know, there's, as musicians, we're constantly sold these things like, you can do it all yourself. You're on an iPad in, <laughs> on an island somewhere. And it's like, it's like I feel like they should tip it on its on on its head, and people should be advertised things like you can work with other people, and you can make better communities, and you can like meet lots of people and things like that. So I, I, I think it's an opportunity for me. I'm still fortunately putting out records. I still put out vinyl. Um, I have a record deal, and I have an opportunity to make music I love and work with people I respect and love. And I think it's it's cool, man. It's like nice to meet different people and work with different people. So. Right, and y you've been with pretty much the same record company mm -hmm. throughout your career, not always under the name Quantic. No, got a lot of different other names. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, t for tax reasons. <laughs> 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 no, 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 no. no. Uh, d do different names denote different facets of, of your musical persona? Yeah, probably. I mean... Um, I kind of into that like I'm into Jamaican music quite a lot and I always like the way Lee Perry set up different pseudonyms for different kind of alter egos and um, I think it's cool to do that I I think it helps it probably it has something to do with people saying ah, you probably shouldn't release any more music this year <laughs> 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 okay well, what if it was a different name right, okay, right. So. Uh, what does the name Quantic mean um, it is a homogenous variable of uh, some kind of mathematical formula I was in a tight moment for a name i had uh my first 45 came out and they were needed a name and they're like what's your name and i said like, i don't know i never thought about it so and i would scan the dictionary late at night and came across the word okay and uh yeah not very romantic reason and, to and name yourself, did you understand but, what the definition was because what you just said to me made absolutely well, no sense I, at all i just <laughs> i just got 11 percent in my maths uh, exam <laughs> at university and <laughs> failed my whole <laughs> music program because of it so uh so basically yeah i didn't have an idea about it but i thought it was quite uh funny that it was a deep meaningful mathematical mathematical terminology given that um at the time i wasn't things weren't going too well in the mathematical department so so because you failed math or yeah. maths as mm -hmm. you brits put it yeah because you failed that you couldn't get your degree in music yeah, I, so I was studying music production and sound engineering, and there was a big acoustic theory section, and uh, uh, yeah, yeah, that, yeah. That, that, that didn't that didn't make the cut. So, <laughs> <laughs> so uh, that's what, I've just been winging it ever since. <laughs> 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 uh, well, now you know I, I'll I'll buy that up to a point, but you know when you're listening to a record that's full of strings and horns and polyrhythms and stuff like you mm -hmm. can't be winging that there's there's orchestration there's very subtle and and very efficient arranging happening there so on some level if only intuitively you know you've you've got i think it's a bit like you know when you maybe it's like going to mu these lovely musicians it's like going you know it's like being involved in a crime and you have to go and they have to paint the the criminal or the suspect you know and there's a a brilliant artist who paints the picture for you and you're like yeah i think it was brown hair brown hair okay you know <laughs> i think okay bad example but i think i, I think yeah, it's <laughs> I, I was waiting to see if that was going to go uh, somewhere that made any sense at yeah, all yeah, the yeah. police sketch artist <laughs> as metaphor for the creative <laughs> process hey you know but I got, I, I got lost as moments long, before you did <laughs> however you get there you gotta get there but uh, no i mean i think it's just relying on uh, people who have an uh, understanding about the intent of music and um, I don't know. I, I've been learning as I go along, and I think I'm having, I'm right, getting it. So. Yeah, to the point where now you're producing other people's records. You produced the new album by uh, the Argentine trio Femina. Yes. Which must have been a blast. That was super cool. So we um, uh, we have our own studio called Selva in uh, in just over in Bushwick, 
and um, that w they were the first group that came through the doors and we produced it and literally there was yeah concrete dust still hanging around I remember at one point there was no wall on the bathroom there was a kind of a curtain over the bathroom so they were very accommodating in the, <laughs> in the <laughs> environment they were recording in but yeah they're super amazing very um, deep music from Patagonia and um, they're super open for modern takes on that. And, right. Uh, and and like you, a combination of the old and the new because it's like, as you say, Patagonian traditional rhythms and mm -hmm. stuff, but then they're also clearly inspired by modern electronic music and hip hop, et cetera. Yeah. And Iggy Pop yeah. is, is on this record. Did, did you actually get to work with him uh i didn't meet him in, in person but um he w yeah as is the world right now email and stuff like that yeah. but um yeah it was kind of surreal to have him on the record um and he was a massive fan of femina and he, when they went to florida they hung out with him and they wrote this avant-garde piece of poetry and translated it into english and had him intone it yeah <laughs> but he put it in, which is like i'm still trying to you think my police uh, portrait <laughs> analogy is <laughs> difficult try and get through that one <laughs> 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 it makes, it makes it look like shakespeare All right. and and there is a an equally bizarre video that goes to that there, song there is of him sort of up in the sky and then <laughs> sitting on him the is like the man in the sun or whatever it's cool though i think it like if cool. there was like if, if there was a more progressive america out there it would be like iggy pop would be this like cultural figure just wandering around in silk robes <laughs> like just kind of <laughs> like you know what i mean like why is not america have something like that maybe or he could <laughs> occupy a certain white house in yeah. our nation's <laughs> capital yeah. that would that's true, that's that true. would be a very different america <laughs> yeah <laughs> um how are you finding america in the time that you've spent here i mean is is Atlantic oscillations, kind of like your vision of New York at this point in time. In a way, yeah. Or my, uh, yeah, my sort of lens, and uh, I think um, it's an interesting time to be in America for sure. Yeah, I've been coming to America for years, and um, I, I, I love it, and I love it, the multicultural nature of America and all the history that America has, the p despite the history that America w wants to tell. You know, yeah, I love yeah. really understanding the true American history. Um, and yeah, it's, it's 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 an amazing place. Well, it? having grown up with American folk music in the house, you you got a lot of American history that many Americans didn't get. Y yeah, because yeah. you know that's kind of uh, the the deeper you go into that folk well, you get some unvarnished stories, some ugly stuff yeah. from like the nineteenth century or whatever. Yeah, like women making their hair into nooses and things like that which is not very well you know you sing those songs as a kid when and <laughs> when you know like murder ballads like yeah. pretty polly and stuff like that yeah yeah there's only wise yeah and, you know and there was a beautiful moment in in that uh, uh, kind of uh, transatlantic relationship between britain and america when the, the you know you and mccall and the seagulls and all those things were kind of drifting back and forth right. between america and britain and it was a really nice time for the Amer american songbook and for British, right. British folk music. And too. Simon and Garfunkel spent their formative years on the London folk circuit, you yeah. know, which is where they got Scarborough Fair from. And they also got into mashed potato, I heard, and, uh, <laughs> and uh, shepherd's pie. <laughs> shepherd's pie, all right. Um, so the, the piece you're going to play next for us, uh, the title is September Blues. Yep. Is it really in a kind of blues form? No, I th it isn't really. It, this, the title itself comes out of, um, I think it was not last September, the September before when the track was kind of penned. And it comes out of just, you know, everyone has a bit of a blues moment in September after New York summer. Like you have that, oh, all of the rosés dried up. <laughs> and uh, Did the you beach. say the rosé has <laughs> yeah, dried yeah. up? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That must have been one hell of a yeah. sign. I don't remember it being so hot that the rosé dried up, but yeah. if you say so. <laughs> you know, but like September is always a time when it's, you know, you start to kind of like in, in well, at least in England too as well, as something you kind of start to bunker yeah. down a little bit and yeah. get, you go, oh, I know, I've got to remember, I've got to get back to work and catch up and stuff. So. All right, let's hear the piece. It's called September Blues. This is Quantic. You'll find the record uh, on the shelves, if there are still record stores with shelves out there. Uh, but anyway, you'll find it online on the record called Atlantic Oscillations. But here, once again, Quantic Live. Thank you. 
September Blues live performance by Quantic here in our WNYC studios on this edition of the Soundcheck podcast, part of uh, newsounds.org. And the uh, album Atlantic Oscillations is out now. Uh, Quantic, uh, again, Will, can be just you. It can be everybody who's here. On August 17th, when it's just you and this modular synthesizer uh, at uh, the Outlier Festival that Bonobo is doing yeah. at Brooklyn Mirage, so that'll be all electronic, right? Yes. Yeah. Will it be dance music? Yeah. yeah. Will it be electronic dance music? Yes. Wow, that was a really <laughs> reluctant yes. <laughs> You know, yeah, but there's a lot of like samples involved, and it's you know, there's some things that though it's not. Are we look? It's not so EDM kind yeah. of thing. Okay. You no, know, there's some other bits. Yeah. So. All right. So that's uh, August 17th. That's the next time you'll be able to see Quantic playing live here in New York at Brooklyn Mirage. This has been great fun, Will, having yeah. you and the band here. Uh, congratulations! It's a great new record, Atlantic Oscillations, and thanks for playing for us today. Thank you very much. This is Soundcheck. Mm-hmm.